Hey, it's another episode of Willow Over Explaining. <laughs> In this case, quilting and um, how I'm hand quilting a quilt for my friend in Ohio. And I'm going to show you some of the blocks that I did and um, all the tools that I'm using to make her a gift quilt. So uh, let's get started, shall we? Okay, here we have the lovely gift quilt that I am making for my friend. The pattern is called Ohio Star because she lives in Ohio. Oh, I'm so clever. And uh, so I've got it set on point, which means that um, rather than having it square and lined up, you know, like a checkerboard, basically, I've got them set on point just because I, I like how the star looks that way. Um, so that's the piece pieces are all done. The top is done. Basically, I've made my quilt sandwich, which is um, the top and the backing, which is this fabric. And uh, the center, which is, let me go over here where it's not pinned down. And find some of the batting. Oops. And you see the batting is in the middle. So basically, you have three layers. You have the top, you have the batting, and you have the back. So you make a quilt sandwich. Now, I'm doing the hand quilting, which combines these and secures them uh, together into one quilt so the batting doesn't shift around when you wash it. And then it makes it like, um, you know, have, gives it a little, whatever I'm trying to say here, fluffiness so that, that uh, it adds warmth, which is the point of a quilt really is to make a nice warm, you know, cover. So let's see, so I've got my thimble here. I like this particular one because, um, as you can see, I have long nails and it goes right over my long nails very comfortably and it can fit over my thumb also because sometimes I'm gonna wanna stitch this way and sometimes I stitch this way. So um, it's versatile, it's comfortable, um, it's uh, you know got a nice metal surface here that catches the needle really well. I like it a lot. Um, this is a needle grabber. This is just a little piece of rubber. They sell these in packages of like three. And um, you can, you know, as you're stitching, you'll grab the needle. I'll show you in just a second. Um, my scissors I've had for probably 30 years, stork shaped. Apparently, I've just discovered <laughs> that the reason a lot of embroidery scissors are stork shaped is that um, they used to be originally, <laughs> they would, they would, snip off umbilical cords with them or they were umbilical clamps so the stork delivering the baby haha ha, see it's like a visual pun but then they turned into embroidery scissors yeah. um, I've got two different colors of uh, thread quilting threads a little bit thicker a little bit stiffer than regular sewing thread um, I got this one I got this one a couple different brands here uh, purple I'm doing on the black to give it just kind of a little interesting color. The black I am using on the pieced uh, sections here. So this is black, and then this is the purple stitching. And as you see, I'm not quite done here. So I've got, uh, in the blank squares, I've got, um, it's a compass rose design of my own making. <laughs> and um, I will go grab that pattern in just a second. I'm using a simple washable uh, fabric pencil to show the lines of where my stitching is going to go so I can follow those lines as I'm stitching so I'm not just going all over the place. And then, let's see, so here's my straight edge uh, so I can just, you know, draw my line if, as needed. Um, and then I also have my, my pet hair roller. <laughs> Very important when you have a cat with, uh, with white hair. And a black quilt, that's, you know, you're going to need that. So then here's a little uh, needle magnet that I just have sitting on here. It comes in two parts. So you can actually sandwich a piece of fabric between that. Like if you're doing cross stitch or something, you can put one magnet on the back, one on the front, and then your needle just kind of sits there, you know, on the magnet. But it's too thick to really do that. So I just have it just kind of sitting there. And here's why I have a pet hair <laughs> thing. Checkers, say hello. Hello. That's Checkers. 
Okay, let me get that pattern real quick so you can see what I'm talking about with uh, with that. Hold on. Okay, so here's the quilting pattern that, that I designed to fit in this 12-inch square. It's just some stiff uh, cardboard, cardstock that's a little bit thicker than what, you know, a cereal box or something like that. It's off the back of an old calendar, a desk calendar. So I make it made it to fit uh, the space and kind of go along with the, the design, you know, the angular design of this um, Ohio Star walk. So I've just drawn on, here's where the stitching is going to go. I cut it out the middle so that I could mark where the middle is with my pencil here. And then I just go around the edges you know, as, a, uh, as I'm going, kind of. Now, it rubs off really easily, which is the idea. You don't want a permanent thing on there, you know. So, I lift it away. I have my outline. I have my center. And then I can use a ruler to, uh, you know, complete the drawing here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> so, from the center, I, you know, press down a little bit. And then get out to the end. Whoops, sorry about that. I dropped the camera down. Sorry about that. Get out to the end, and voila, you have a line that you can follow with your stitching. One more thing. Um, I have this, this frame that uh, um, I got back from my sister recently. <laughs> it's a, um, a stretcher frame, kind of. I don't know how to explain it, really. It, the quilt itself is rolled onto two large... Uh, rods basically that then sit in this frame um you know that, that hold it out you don't want a quilt stretch drum tight basically um because then that doesn't give you any flex here i'm pushing on the bottom any flex to the fabric that you need as you're working the needle through the fabric um, but, so i just to make sure this is pulled tight enough i just have it pinned to just a piece of old shirt that I've, uh, you know, I've pinned that onto there to kind of help pull it this direction. Because it's already pulled this way. So you want it pulled that way also to, to even it out so it's not getting all, um, you know, cr crinkled in the middle, basically. And then uh, on this one, I, I used safety pins to pin the layers together briefly. Um, as I'm working, I take those out. Um, this one can probably come out, although I haven't finished stitching this all the way up. This is just getting a simple, you know, back and forth. This is where the main things are being held together. Generally, you don't want more than about four inches of dead space between the quilting stitches or the batting inside can shift around a little bit, but just, you know, wash your quilts carefully. Don't throw them in the, <laughs> in the wash with your rather regular wash because they could get damaged that way and wash them in cold also uh so i think that's about it for stuff and things of the tools um now i'm going to cut to me actually doing some more of this hand quilting so you can kind of see how that works okay we'll see how this looks uh so i've got my my needle here and uh let's see if that's too far from the camera to really see what i'm doing i think what i'll do is i'll will actually do this one just because it's so much closer to where i've got my camera so let me get my thimble my... usually I would ordinarily go on the outside edges first but just for this demonstration I'm just gonna start here now what I've done is I have a short length not too long um, I have a single knot in the end in fact you know what I'm gonna cut that off for demonstration purposes I'm gonna get rid of that guy and retie that so you can see something here so just a single knot and um, just grab the tail so it doesn't just, as you're pushing with your thumb and forefinger, it doesn't just <laughs> go right off the end of the thread. Just kind of hold on to that. Um, make it kind of close to the end because uh, if you go in here too far, then you're going to have all this tail that you can't bury, really. And this is close enough to the stitching line that what I think I'm going to do, the idea here is you're securing this knot uh, inside somewhere that it won't just pull right through as you're stitching. So in this case, we are close enough, we can actually use this 
to uh, go through the seam invisibly on the inside and secure that knot that way. If you're out here someplace, what you do, would do is um, just plunge it wherever you can. Well, not plunge it, but go sideways into the batting wherever you can and do little spiral motions as you're going. And what that'll do is um, catch that knot in, in the batting and it'll kind of get wedged in there a little bit and it'll secure your knot that way. So, But in this case, I think we're going to start with this seam because that's a much more secure way to secure you're not, and again, I ordinarily would go, you know, on the outside edges as I did on the other block, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Quilt it as you want. Now, see, now it didn't catch that seam, but that's okay. Just very gently pull till you can feel resistance, and then stop. Don't keep pulling it, or you're going to pull it right through the front, and you have to start over. So, yeah, symbol, there we go. So, on the underside, your hand is feeling for the tip of that needle. <clears throat> so you just gently push it through till you just feel that little pointy tip and then bend everything around to where it comes back out and you feel it with your other finger and then you just do that back and forth following that line see up oh, I feel it bend it up and you can get you know three or four stitches on there before it gets too hard to pull through all that fabric Push it through as far as you can. Needle grabber, little piece of rubber, just grabs right onto that metal and it doesn't slip through your fingers. It works really well. So pull it snug, not super tight. You don't want to make it pucker up. And just keep going. You just do the same thing over and over and over for a million stitches <laughs> until you're done stitching. In other ones, I'll do like some piece tops and then you can kind of see how that all goes. So to and a row of stitching. Hopefully you'll be able to see this okay. Um, basically, one way to do it is to go make your last stitch go back into your other row of stitching. So you're sistering this previous stitch or one of the previous stitches. Um, you're sistering this previous stitch up uh, and then what you're going to do is take and put a knot um, a little ways up, not right, not right up against here, because then you have nowhere to go with it. So basically, um, up, I don't know, quarter of an inch, half an inch, something like that, and then use this stitch to disguise the one you're doing, and do the same kind of wiggly spiral into the batting as you did when you started. Come out just somewhere. And then uh, as you pull it tight, you're going to kind of give it a little yank at the very end to pop this knot through the fabric and then hide the tail invisibly. Pop like that. And then just clip it off right next to the fabric. If there's a tiny little tail, you can just take your needle and kind of wiggle it to draw that in. And then you have your invisible ending that's secured, uh, you know, with a knot inside the bag. It's not super secure. Wash your quilts carefully by hand, ideally. Don't wash them in hot water. <laughs> Don't wash them on, you know, agitate cycle, whatever. I mean, keep, treat them well. Be gentle with them, and they will last much longer. The stitching will hold much better if you hand wash and hand dry. In the meantime, I hope you have enjoyed my little over-explaining video on uh, how to do some simple quilting. Um, it's pretty fun. It's very meditative. Um, there's a thing right now called uh, slow stitch, which is popular, that um, people specifically use stitching as a meditation to slow down. So you just do a running stitch, or you do embroidery, or you do any kind of handwork that helps you relax. Um, crafts are very therapeutic in general. Um, they, you know, not only is it very tactile, so that's good for those of us who are all about the tactile and all about the senses. Um, it helps kind of scratch that itch, but also it makes you slow down. Like when you go through a Japanese tea garden and you have a path that is set in such a way that it's not a straight path right through the garden. You have to walk a zigzag or you have to carefully step because there's spaces and there's water below, you have to watch where you're stepping, it forces you to slow down. 
And right now, in today's world, I think, uh, you know, we can all kind of use that sort of meditation. Um, so, anyway, that's part of my philosophy on crafts and why I do them and why I enjoy them so much. So, I hope you liked this video. Thanks.